Hi, I'm Ida Humeset Jedu, and I'm a PhD student at Helsinki University at the Faculty of Behavioral Sciences. And I do my PhD in um, intercultural education in Finland. Um, and when I uh, was asked to plan this um, lecture, I chose the perspective of the child this time, even if I would talk a lot about education and school, because many times we um, speak from the perspective of the teacher and ask how the teacher will manage to teach in multicultural schools and these are typical issues um, that are mentioned with it within education, but how is it from the child's perspective? Um, I will also use uh, research from earlier projects where I have been a research assistant um, researching multilingual children and their uh, identity construction and language learning. Um, I'm also a mother of um, what could be categorized as a multicultural child and yeah, um, mother in a, an intercultural or a multicultural family. Um, my topics are uh, identity as something situated and changing and then some problematization of what do we mean by multicultural and culture. Uh, this, these frequently used words or concepts, but um, what do we actually mean by them? And then about multicultural education in school and different approaches and uh, from a child's perspective what they can mean. Mm. A dynamic view and identity uh, means that uh, identity is something that we construct in interaction with others. So it's a, a social constructionism. Um, and uh, it means that the identity changes in different contexts and situations. Um, we don't become totally different, but we use and make relevant different categories. Uh, in different contexts and situations. Um, for example, now I make relevant being a researcher and not a mother, but in another situation it would be uh, otherwise. And this is what the image tries to illustrate there um, with all these stickers, lawyer, wife, uh, consumer, soccer mom, and so on. Um, what is also important when analyzing identity construction from this perspective is that we ascribe our self-identities, but we also ascribe others, and others ascribe us different identities. And sometimes it's not maybe the category we would like to make relevant that others um, put on us, or the labels, so to say. Um, and this can be the case when talking about multicultural children or multicultural persons in general, it's not always maybe that they would choose the same category as what uh, other put, uh, others put on them. Um, I will illustrate this um, kind of identity construction by showing some examples from um, this um, earlier research on multilingual children and uh, video observations that we made. Um, yeah, first I want to point out that different children identify with and relate to, to their country of origin, their parents' culture or cultures, their nationality, their languages, their religion, in different ways. We cannot really predict that by looking at them or by reading facts about them, um, because it's, it's changing and it varies uh, depending on uh, in what kind of situations they are and what they find useful what dimension of their identity and what they find appreciated by others in the community where they are. Uh, in this example we followed a child called, called Tara with um, parents from Kenya and uh, in this situation they started to talk about where everybody was uh, born and another participant here is Hanna who was adopted from China and then a girl Maya who uh, was adopted from uh, in India. Um, 
now here came a critical warning that the recorder has stopped. Mm. And they, uh, Maya asks that, what country were you born? And Sarah answers, from Kenya, and Hannah was born from Finland. Um, then they go on, Hannah says Kenya, and, but Hannah says no to the fact that Hannah was born from Finland. And Maya uh, corrects this by saying China. And Sarah insists, no, Finland. And Hannah goes on talking about that Maya was born from India. Uh, what illustrates well this kind of situated identity is that actually Sara was the one born in Finland and Hanna was the one born in China, but Sara says it the other way around because that's how they, um, what they relate to or, or what they make more relevant of their identity. Sara often talks about her African origin as she uses the word herself, but Hanna, mm, seldom you talks about being from China and makes Finland more relevant. Um, then they go on and talk about um, more precisely where they are from and also their uh, skin color and they compare um, and look at our skin and I know look my skin I have almost the same but I have darker and then again where were you born and and these are preschool children, so they do a quite thorough analysis for that uh, age. Um, and then uh, in the end, Sarah says that Hannah, uh, I have Africa and you have Asia. So she makes kind of an in-group um, where they both have another continent or another country of origin uh, than the others and that's what she does many times she uses her ethnicity or country of origin as uh, an asset as something she um, can can gain something from in the interaction and then a bit about this concept multicultural um, who is actually multicultural and what is it if we read the new national core curriculum in Finland, um, it is stated that everybody belongs to the diversity. Uh, multiculturalism is not used so much anymore, it's a diversity. Um, but then, for example, if we read Finnish teacher education policies and talk with teacher educators, multicultural is still used quite a lot about uh, immigrants. Uh, immigrant is also a concept that can be discussed. What is it really? When are you an immigrant? When do you stop being an in immigrant? And so on. Um, and uh, especially racialized and non-Western immigrants. Um, and this can be seen if we contrast with international, which is used also more about Western and white immigrants, and also about when we say international schools, we think more about maybe Germans or French or um, Americans, but then when we say multicultural schools, it's uh, more about racialized non-Western immigrants and this has been shown in both uh, research from Finland and Sweden um, where in the schools also those those pupils who were um, non-European or non-white, non-Christian were talked about as, as being the multicultural ones. Uh, so what is it actually then? And uh, what is it about the word culture that makes this kind of, of division? Uh, there are hundreds of definitions of what culture is, and um, it can be defined, for example, as a shared meaning system among people who define themselves as belonging to the same group, and the group can be uh, a nation, uh, an ethnic group, a religious group, uh, or a smaller, uh, like a family, or a football club or something. Mm. But, and it can be seen as dynamic as identity. So it can be seen as uh, something that changes um, takes influences. Um, but often when talking about or describing others 
we do not belong to the Finnish norms. Culture is used in quite a static and stereotypical way. So not so changing and flexible, but the culture of the others is like that. And um, uh, researchers argue also that the concept of culture has actually replaced the concept of race, because um, people want to avoid the charge of races and uh, we're beyond the stage of talking about bio biological race. But actually, when dividing people into this kind of stable uh, culture groups, this uh, unequal division continues, but in the name of cultural difference instead of, of in the name of race. <coughs> and when we uh, take this from the child's perspective, if culture and multicultural um, is used with a strong link to race, it uh, means that racialized children might get categorized as being culturally different just by how they look. And uh, then a racialized child's behavior might get explained more by culture um, than his white Finnish classmates. Um, so if a, a racialized child uh, talk loudly or come late or behave in a manner that is not appreciated in the same way, it might be explained by culture more than if a Finnish uh, white pupil would do these same things. It would be explained more by his person personality or some more uh, individual issues. Um, then also the expectations from the teacher might be lower for him or her. And uh, we know that if the teacher expects less from you, then you will also achieve less many times. Um, so this has um, also big, um, big influences of, of how you will then succeed in, in life later on. Uh, being multicultural or categorized as multicultural can become a case of, of being a resource for other pupils who belong to the norm. And, um, you can be asked questions as, can you tell us about your country or your religion or how do you do in your culture? And this can, of course, be also a good thing, but sometimes it can be, be seen as you're providing the others with something they didn't know from before. Um, then there's also another aspect of this. If we associate a culture with skin color or physical traits, it leaves uh, white children who speak several languages at home who belong to a religious or ethnic minority without attention. Um, and they might um, feel like one part of their identity is not taken into account, it's not acknowledged. And um, this is also negative for them. Then. But what to do or what is there for approaches? Okay, um, what to do, uh, what is there for approaches within multicultural education? Um, I have divided these, there are a lot, but into three main approaches, which would be conservative, liberal, and critical multicultural education. And um, i drawn several uh, researchers in the field. Um, the conservative multicultural education is about educating the cultural other um, uh, to assimilate or integrate him or her into the norm. And the focus is on the other and how to yeah, make the other normal, if we say it like that. The other is the term used um, when researching how someone is made uh, the different and uh, uh, who, who becomes outside the norm. Uh, then liberal multicultural education is more about celebrating and acknowledging differences and having tolerance for the other, understanding the other's perspective. Um, and the focus is on, on the majority to understand more about the other. But the division um, between us and them still is there. Um, so then the critical multicultural education is more about 
um, looking at the structural inequalities in society, what kind of power, power relations are there, and and uh, being critical to the other ring. Uh, what is it that makes some people being the other, uh, or considered the other? Um, it's also about having diversity in the teaching material, so making everybody feel like they belong to the norm, not having only for example, white um, heterosexual uh, families in the textbooks. Uh, it's about taking intersectional perspectives, looking at both gender or class, ethnicity at the same time, and how this affects um, if someone is being oppressed or having less opportunities than someone else. Um, and the focus is on social change and making the structures uh, better and um, changing the norms so that everybody could fit in. Then these uh, different approaches, if we look at them from the child's perspective, um, the conservative multicultural education would mean <coughs> this could, for example, be in a preparatory class uh, uh, if a newcomer uh, comes to Finland and goes to, to that class. Um, he or she would get help with, multi with possible learning or language difficulties, learn how to adapt to the norm, um, but also get possible difficulties or, or conflicts between peers explained by culture, maybe more than what would be actually the case. Um, the child uh, will also then be met by teachers who say that they are colorblind and they, therefore they won't acknowledge the background in explicit ways. Uh, so trying to treat everybody the same, uh, so that everybody would be the same in the end, more or less. Liberal multicultural education then um, would mean that as a multicultural child you would get your cultural, linguistic, religious background acknowledged in different ways in school, and also get to know other pupils' backgrounds. Um, but sometimes you would be seen as the different, um, different than the pupils who belong to the norm. And uh, you will be asked to represent your culture or religion and inform, inform others about, about it. So sometimes maybe um, you would feel as being different when you would like to be just everybody else. But there's of course a lot of good intentions in this approach that getting all pupils to show um, their identities more or less. Um, in the critical multicultural education um, that would mean for a child that you get your cultural, linguistic, religious background acknowledged in different ways um, but you would also see people who look like or speak like or have the same background as you in teaching materials and examples. So you would, you would feel like um, you're part of the norm of the community and not someone um, different or an outsider. And uh, you will also hear teachers question discrimination and norms that do not benefit everybody. So you would not have to feel these kind of issues not being. Um, questions uh, questioned by the teachers or adults. Um, you would also be encouraged to strive as high as everybody else and be given a voice for your different experiences, not only your culture, which can be the case in the liberal approach, but the culture is overemphasized for some children. Um, some examples from uh, research. This is from uh, the same class where Sarah and Hannah uh, went to, the girls from the uh, excerpt I showed uh, earlier. And uh, we chose themes to work with in the class uh, that were um, similar to what they have had talked about themselves in their own peer interaction. And it was, for, for example, language practices, 
so uh, what language uh, all of the people speak in different situations when going to the shop or being with friends or being at home, being in school. Um, and what uh, we tried to, to take into consideration for all these exercises was that it would be possible for, for every pupil to participate and it would be um, uh, a possibility to, to construct identity but not uh, dividing into who's different and who's who's the normal, but more for everybody to explore different dimensions of themselves. Um, we also made family trees and discussed about relatives and then uh, group belonging and different kinds of groups and what does it mean um, to belong to a family or friends or a nation and who decides on who belongs and can you change it um, and these kind of of questions and they were asked to color what groups were important for them and, and, and color a, um, a picture of a, a human with the color of the groups that were the most important. Um, when talking about the different groups uh, we had these situations when, um, when we talked about belonging to a country or a nation and uh, then both Sara and Hanna uh, mentioned that they belong to China or Kenya and Finland and equally to both. Um, and this was um, something that they uh, themselves took up. Uh, we didn't force any identity on them. But everybody could say what group they belong to and how they feel about that. Um, so it was kind of making room for identity construction, but not forcing identities on, on them. Um, the teacher of the class told that after uh, that we had done this kind of, of activities, the pupils started talking more about the linguistic and, and um, linguistic background and origin. And um, also, for example, some pupils who spoke Russian at home became more um, proud about this than before. So it seemed that it had a, a positive impact on, on looking at, at different dimensions of identity. Uh, other examples of good practice that we have seen in, in research recently was, for example, um, with one class, um, the arts teacher wanted to do something about that. Um, it was said that the arts uh, education is not enough multicultural in Finland and then first she wanted to do something where the multicultural pupils could bring their culture into the art but then she realized that it, this would be like half of the class um, bringing something and then those who were uh, considered the Finnish ones would not feel that they have something special to bring um, and it would divide into this typical um, <coughs> us and them. So she changed it to being a lesson on everybody's own visual culture and everybody was bringing something, uh, some uh, Im images or something that was vis visually important for them. And some brought uh, something religious or um, from their um, parents' country of origin or like that. But um, also, there was also football and animals and uh, from the, the town where they were living and, um, and it didn't become this kind of, of um, othering um, process. Um, then other examples are, of course, when uh, teachers and adults step in and question when derogatory words are used and not only um, uh, derogatory but uh, categories in general, taking them into discussions. Um, in the same class with the multicultural art, art lesson, um, the pupils divided themselves into Finnish and refugees and the teacher had discussed this with them and asked what they, what they uh, meant by this and who was categorized as refugees and, and uh, what did they mean, mean by this or, and how did they feel about it. Uh, so daring to take these discussions and not always knowing where they will end, but still taking responsibility of, 
of discussing it. Mm. Then, um, as a teacher, also um, what they consider examples of good practice um, is when they take uh, or invite different views of the world and hear the pupils, when the pupils bring some issues, what's happening in the world or something from the news to the table and, and um, um, tell about their perspective. Um, it's discussed and, and also maybe uh, criticizing the textbooks uh, because the textbooks um, have been uh, many times uh, have this kind of uh, superior image of the West as the media also um, so daring to discuss these issues and not taking them as some um, uh, truths that every teacher has to follow um, and uh, also in general giving opportunities for for the children to talk about and construct their ident identities and belongings um, and making room for changing them on the way and not expecting them to stay in, in one box um, forever because nobody would feel comfortable like that. Okay. So, I thank you for this uh, lecture and if you have questions or comments later on, feel free to contact me on my email or phone.